Hey everybody, um, my name is Chris McKinney and I just want to share my testimony real quick. Um, first, I'll tell you about a dream uh, that I had right after this, this battle. I, basically, I, I had a dream where I was fighting the devil and um, the fight was really basic. Um, the devil was standing in front of me and I was throwing salt at him. And as I threw salt at him, he um, it paralyzed him. He couldn't move. And he just kind of slowly went to the ground. And um, he had come up and, and tried to start the fight. He had tried to, you know, pick the fight. But that was my response was to throw salt at him. And um, as I did that, he, he sort of slowly fell to the ground. And, and he ended the, the dream. He was on his, uh, he was on the ground, unable to move. And then I woke up. And as soon as I woke up, I uh, sensed the interpretation of the, the dream. I had just come through a long battle, uh, an intense battle, and uh, uh, we had just won. And God was, I, I felt like through that dream, God was confirming for me that the importance of how we won. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, but but I will I, I will mention the battle was with papillary uh, thyroid cancer. And, uh, um, but... Um, yeah, I'll, I'll get back to that in just a second. Uh, first, just wanted to tell you a little bit about myself since this is uh, my first time doing a video. Um, my name is Chris McKinney. Like I said, I'm, I'm the co-founder of Called Writers Christian Publishing. Uh, we're a new Christian publishing house. I write for uh, various Christian magazines, publications, websites. I, um, I've written for churches, ministries, that, that kind of thing. Um, uh, I used to be the executive editor for a relatively new Christian magazine called Godspeed Magazine, and um, it's you know like I said, relatively new, but it's uh, it's really awesome. You guys uh, should definitely check it out, and you can actually get a uh, a ninety day free trial of that magazine by using uh, coupon code called C A L L E D. Um, so you just go to their website, hit subscribe, and then C A L L E D. You'll get ninety days free. Um, so anyway, uh, I stepped down from that job at the end of, of December uh, to pursue the calling of uh, writing, editing, and publishing Christian books. And um, we already had the publishing company going, but I, I felt God calling me to focus on it full time. But, um, but anyway, uh, so in May of 2019, somebody uh, sent me a manuscript for review. Uh, I started reading it and... Um, you know, God used it to work so powerfully in my life that I ended up becoming a co-author. And that book actually just, just came out. It's um, get it just right there. And that this is it. Uh, it came out uh, February 4th was, was our launch date. And um, so been out for a couple of weeks and, um, you know, it's, uh, it's going real well, but uh, it's been a long, difficult process getting here. And, you know, what, what happened was, um, uh, well, first, what happened was as I read the the manuscript for this book, the original manuscript, uh, God used it to work so powerfully in my life. I ended up becoming a co-author. Forgive me if I already said that, but but what, what the way He did that was through um, um, He gave me the gift of interpretation while I read the uh, the manuscript. And you know, I'd been praying in tongues for uh, several years. Um, I I don't think I'd ever really even thought about the gift of interpretation. I think it literally it just had never come in my mind somehow, uh, which is really strange now that I look back on it. But, but yeah, I think I thought that it was only for people who uh, pray in tongues pub publicly at, at their church or maybe a s small group or whatever. I'd only ever seen it done once in a church many, many years ago. You know, somebody prayed, somebody interpreted, just like it's described in the Bible. And uh, so I, I had that, I think I had that picture in my mind and just thought that was the only way that it worked. Um, but um, you can actually interpret your own tongue at home. Um, and so it, I, I think there are some, um, you know, unique aspects w when you do it that way. Uh, you kind of build in a testing process when you're doing it with other people at, at church. So you have to have some discipline and make sure that you build a, a testing process into, you know, if you do it uh, yourself at home. But anyway, um, you know, <sighs> You know, I, God gave me that gift, and then He confirmed for me that it, that it was genuine. Uh, he gave me some advanced directives through it that proved um, accurate and and also very crucial to other people getting set free set free of things or blessed somehow. 
Uh, so basically crucial to ministry work that God was, was doing through me. And so I'll, I'll share more about those in future videos. But, but you know, I was in the midst of all of that. I, I have this new spiritual gift um, that God is, is using to bless me and to bless others. And, um, and you know, then, uh, you know, late July, so I'd had the, uh, the manuscript and was working on this book for around three months. Uh, late July, I got diagnosed with papillary thyroid cancer, you know, and I was 41 years old. I've got three kids, you know, it was a, it was a big shock. And so, uh, you know, I had known that there was this lump in my neck for some time, but you know, that we weren't, we were believing and hoping for, you know, good news, you know, it's benign, it's whatever, but, but anyway, it's not the news that we got. And so, um, you know, at this point, my family and I had already come through, uh, seven years of just intense spiritual battles, protracted spiritual battles. And, um, you know, th there were times of re reprieve. There were times of rest. There were times of plenty of blessings along the way. Um, but really, overall, that that period of time in my life, it just felt like it was marked by these really intense and protracted uh, spiritual ba battles. And so, you know, when this happened, I, I sensed that it was a spiritual attack, um, you know, that, uh, you know, the enemy did not want this book to come out. You know, the enemy does not want people to have spiritual gifts and to operate in them. And, and so, you know, uh, I, I believe that it, it was a spiritual attack, but I just did not have any will to fight it. I mean, I, I um, you know, I felt like I needed to fight back with faith and prayer, uh, but I just couldn't muster the will to do that in anything more than what, what I would call like a half-hearted kind of a way. Um, you know, and I just kept telling God, I kept saying, Lord, I'm, I'm too worn out for this. I am worn out. I'm exhausted. I'm, you know, I'm weary. I'm weak. And, uh, you know, but the thing is the battle was there, whether I wanted it to be or not, you know, whether I felt ready for it or not, it was there. And, um, you know, and so that's when we really get to the goodness of God in this story, because, um, you know, I, around that time I was saying those things to the Lord, I, I read this devotional and it was, um, you know, gave me prophetic encouragement. It basically said that, uh, like any good king or general, God does not send his troops out to fight w w wounded, weak and weary, you know, and he definitely is not sending us out to fight alone ever. And so, but, you know, it said that when uh, when we're wounded, when we're weak, when we're weary, God sends us reinforcements. And, um, you know, so this this devotional actually said God's about to send you reinforcements. So it was, it was very uh, great, you know, wonderful encouragement for me. And sure enough, quickly, I started seeing that come to pass. Uh, around that same time, there was a group of people that kind of came forward and said that they were feeling led to form a prayer team to, to cover Godspeed Magazine uh, staff in prayer. And so they started praying for me. And, uh, you know, I, I realized that, you know, I already had a prayer team that was praying over this book. Um, and so, you know, I started asking them to intercede for my health. And, um, you know, basically the next thing I know, I started looking around and seeing these opportunities all around me to have others pray for me. I mean, uh, I was going to various, you know, events, conferences, churches I would visit, you know, uh, I went to the North Georgia revival twice. I had lots of prayer, uh, and, and, you know, every, each time I went, um, you know, and there were just all these opportunities. I mean, I realized, Hey, I here at my own church, I, I can go up every single Sunday. They have a prayer team sitting there, you know, so I started going up every Sunday and I, you know, <laughs> I mean, it felt a little, um, awkward to go up every Sunday with the same request, but I just, I just kept doing it. And, and, you know, um, prayer cards, we do, we do prayer cards. I filled it out every week, same, same thing, you know, and, um, you know, visiting other people's churches, whatever. I mean, they were just, I, I realized, you know, I was already in Facebook groups where there are dedicated uh, intercessors. And let me tell you, when somebody's gifted and called, you know, and that's like a primary area of calling for them, they love it. They love it. That's their gift. They, they, they can't wait to pray for you. They love to you know, get a prayer request. So, you know, I started realizing that. And, um, you know, what I found was that even when I was too weak, too weary to, uh, you know, to pray um, and try to muster faith or battle for the situation that, you know, I really, it didn't bother me at all to ask other people to do that, you know? Um, and so in the end, that is how we got the victory. You know, is I, when I, every time I was throwing, every time I was asking somebody to pray for me, I was throwing salt at the devil and he was rendered powerless. <laughs> he was paralyzed. His, you know, he couldn't do what he was trying to do. Now, 
so that is how we got the victory. Um, you know, it wasn't easy. Uh, the spiritual attack was, was very real. We, uh, when we got the diagnosis, the doctors had uh, explained that, you know, the type of, this type of cancer I had was very slow growing. It had probably been there for years. There was only one small spot on my thyroid and there was only one lymph node that was affected. And so they did, they even said, you know, it wasn't anything urgent. Like, you know, they recommended that I have surgery within six weeks. And so that felt like, you know, God's given us some time to pray, uh, for this, you know, over the situation. It was a, still a big decision. Um, you know, even though it was seemed like a good option, it was, it was a big decision because it involved removing my entire thyroid and I would have to be on this um, replacement hormone the rest of my life. And, you know, that can affect various things. So we, we wanted to pray about it. We did, you know, and um, we requested that was, you know, we were going through the requesting prayer and all of that. And, you know, we went back four weeks later and uh, hoping for good news, believing for good news. And what during the ultrasound, I could tell, you know, that, that something wasn't good. Um, but but basically they, you know, uh, when they gave me the report, there were so many affected lymph nodes um, and so many spots on my thyroid that they just didn't even assign a number to it. You know, it just it, the term multiple was in there several times and they didn't even when they went over it with me. They just, you know, it was basically like an explosion had gone off in my neck and um you know, it, it was very serious at that point. It was, um, you know, and it was discouraging. I mean, it was a, it, I was in a battle still. Um, but, you know, God had an answer for that. For everything the devil threw at us, all the ways he tried to stop this book and our publishing company and just the ministry work we're doing, um, you know, God had an answer. God won every battle, you know. Um, and uh, the, the answer that God had for the, the cancer battle, battle was not, you know, a miracle healing that we were hoping and believing for. But his answer was to connect me with uh, the number one thyroid surgeon in the country. His name is uh, Dr. Gary Clayman. Uh, he also happens to be a strong Christian. He has a prayer ministry, okay, that prays for all of his uh, patients and upcoming patients. So by the time I got there, they'd already been praying over me for several weeks. I mean, it was just everywhere. We're throwing salt at the devil, right? And uh, so, you know, in the end, uh, Dr. Clayman, he got all of it. Um, he removed my entire thyroid. Uh, it had spread over to one of my parathyroid glands. So he had to take one of those out and he took out 64 lymph nodes. And um, in the pathology, you know, test they do after that, 29 of those tested positive. And so I went from one affected lymph node uh, to 29 affected lymph nodes in just a couple of months. And um, I think, you know, any medical professional that knows about this particular disease could probably come in and you know verify that's not not normal at all it's i think it even would i, I would even as i understand it defies the normal medical thinking about this this particular disease but uh god gave me an excellent you know gifted surgeon uh, uh obviously somebody who was born and created by god to do what he does and um you know but uh you know still even with somebody that gifted we need to cover it in prayer and i, and I think you know, that was very important uh, for the surgery itself. You know, the normal surgery is about two hours. He spent five and a half hours on me, he and his uh, uh, partner. And, uh, you know, they got every bit of it. Let, you know, later on, medical tests confirmed, um, you know, that I was com completely medical, medically cured. And so, you know, I honored the, the doctor, Dr. Clayman, and, and all the other people involved for that. But I, I praise God for that. God is good. You know, the, the, the main point I want to share uh, is that, you know, all of those prayers matter. Every single prayer mattered. Um, you know, even though we didn't get the miracle healing we were wanting, um, God heard and considered and, and in the end answered every single prayer with his answer. And so, you know, uh, we could see his hand all over the solution, you know, getting accepted as a patient, um, you know, him, the doctor and being in network for my insurance, you know, God providing the exact amount that we needed for out of pocket medical costs. I mean, you know, from two different unexpected sources, we, we, God gave us the exact amount. I mean, uh, all the tra travel and childcare and everything we needed, you know, God's hand, God's people were, you know, were all over the situation. And so I just want to encourage, you know, other people with that. If you're going through anything difficult, if you're weak, if you're weary and you feel wounded, um, you know, call on your brothers and sisters. Um, they are here for you. You start looking around, you're going to see that prayer warriors are all around you. And, um, you know, they can have faith for you when, when, when your faith is weak. And so, um, and just be encouraged with that. And, um, uh, thank you so much for, uh, for listening to my testimony. God bless you.